afternoon. This is a documentary on making homemade sauerkraut. The uh, several methods of making homemade sauerkraut is by using the crock method or individual jars. They're both all right. The crock method to me is it restricts you to one type or one flavor of sauerkraut. However, making it in individual jars, you can vary the taste and the variety by using dill, garlic, bay leaves, fennel, or other herbs. For those that like hot, spicy food, a jalapeno pepper in each jar really sets it off. The required material for making cabbage, making sauerkraut rather, is clean jars and lids, preferably wide mouth, kosher salt, coarse ground, which is iodine free, a cabbage shredder called a kraut knife for some reason or other. I have two kinds today. One is my own kraut knife, which has Two adjustable blades, which you can raise one and lower, lower the other one and, and vary your cut of the cabbage. Another type is an older type and much heavier, larger, also has adjustable blades. And by sliding the box, putting the cabbage in and sliding the box back and forth, you cut your cabbage, but please exercise caution in using either one of these types because those blades do not discriminate against fingers or fingernails. Here's another type of shred shredder which I wouldn't recommend because we don't have that much time. Snow will be blowing before we get finished. Uh, In, in using, in, in uh, processing cabbage, sauerkraut outside, you have to exercise caution, or rather stress sanitation, because uh, one thing and another, uh, for one instance, we're under a tree, here, and leaves are always falling, and you don't want leaves in your sauerkraut and of course there's inchworms and whatnot that's likely to fall in it. Uh, I wear a hat. I prefer not to but that's another reason for sanitation purposes because you don't want hair in your sauerkraut. At least I don't. I have uh, already prepared all several heads of cabbage beforehand. I have another head ready for shredding to show you how this knife goes with the cameraman will follow me around to the board <coughs> to hold a cabbage <coughs> oh boy <coughs> it's such a method that uh, your fingers are clear at all times and going back and forth on the shredder and turning it occasionally, keeping an eye on the center part, which is the heart, and incidentally, that is a part that we'll use later. Nothing is wasted in making sauerkraut. Now this takes a while. You'll notice that all the loose stuff, like this, you can't run that across the board because it's too dangerous, so just keep that aside. That will be used also.
turning it around, you can also see the end of the stem. Keep rotating and notice every now and then when you get down to the center, it'll show up. Now we're making we're making sauerkraut and we're making a hell of a lot of noise. And the sound man don't get all shook up. Okay, we're winning. And I've still got all my fingers. So just keep going around until you start to see the woody part, the, the, the stem or the core of the cabbage. All right, we'll call that one. Set that aside. Keep all this stuff handy. Now, here is the here is the shredded cabbage, nice and fresh. Now we'll get this up where we can work on it. Using our clean jar, set it down in there. Now, I'm going to use garlic today. We'll smash it in the in the Ziploc bag, and that is one concession I make about plastic. It, it is handy for freezing and cooking. We'll put a clove or two of garlic in the bottom. A couple of sprigs of dill. That's not the greatest dill. If the cameraman will follow me for just a second, I happen to see a fresh sprig of dill out in the garden. Now, that is fresh dill. Can't get any fresher than that. Now, here's the jalapeno pepper that I've cut the ends off, perforated so that the juice will get inside the pepper and also let some of that good spicy flavor out. Now, the reason why we don't put the salt right in the jar now is because the salt will stay on the bottom of the jar and it won't penetrate through the, through the sauerkraut. We'll use a tablespoon of salt to each quart. I'll put a teaspoon in now pack more sauerkraut in and keep packing. There's no water added to sauerkraut. It makes its own juice and it takes good strong fingers and thumbs to get it down in there. When we get up near the top, you can hear it start squishing, making funny noises. Consequently, I make a few funny noises, but a few grunts thrown in now and then. Now we put our other teaspoon of salt near the top, and another handful of shredded cabbage, and 
Keep packing. <laughs> Now there you are. The cameraman will come in with a close up. I can show you. See the foam? Now that is no no water added, it's made its own juice. Nice clean fresh cabbage with everything visible in the bottom. You can always tell what flavor this will be by turning it up and looking at the bottom. Now we'll leave a small airspace, well, three quarters of an inch or so, in the top of the jar. And in fermenting, there's a lot of gas created, and you have to have that airspace. And in order to keep the sauerkraut immersed in its juice, should have something on top, which is difficult to put anything in there that won't contaminate it. So we'll use some of our stems and pieces, pieces of our leaves, the cleaner ones. We'll break off the old junk stuff. Fold it lightly, put it inside, and another one. Like so. Now, that'll always stay. Now this will be discarded after it's fermented. This old stuff will be taken off. Now we'll use a clean lid, and once again, cleanliness. These have been washed and they're clean, and old lids can be used, and I'm using a mayonnaise jar, which is a wide mouth jar. Now these jars are not for this type of a thing, but by, use, by exercising caution, it can be used several times. And the lids are another story. Now they have a cardboard lid in them, which is not much. It smells like old mayonnaise. Uh, but you still have to have a clean lid inside. To put this on temporarily while it's fermenting and then discard, discard it because it's, it will more than likely rust. Now when you tighten them up, just, just a good snug like so and set it aside. Now the fermentation process will vary because this is an outside operation and it varies on the temperature, like cool nights and warm days is great. It will ferment on its own, it needs no care. And the duration of fermentation is from five to seven days. Uh, each day, uh, you'll notice bubbles coming up and some of them will bubble over, which is Okay, but in the event that you lose too much water, you can see the water lying around there. You can add some boiled water, right, which you have added a tablespoon of salt to the quart. And you can add the water in and bring it up to a level again. Put the lid back on, and you haven't let too much oxygen in there, and snug it back up and continue your fermentation process. Now at the end of five to seven days when you make a taste test, just take the slipper little level, take the lid off, take some of this junk off, and get your pinch, take a little taste. Now it varies. Uh, tartness, uh, saltiness, whatever. This, after all, this is your own taste that you're going to have to please. So when you've decided it is done, you go through a process. Home canners knows what hot water bath is. It's strictly a matter of putting the jars 
into uh, a deep pan or pot that you can cover the whole lid with water and bring it to a boil. Now, I, my particular container, I, it, it will handle four quarts at a time. I put it in, in cold water bring, and bring it up to a boil and boil it for 12, 12 to 15 minutes, which really doesn't would that way pizza chopper uh, it doesn't cook the sauerkraut all it does is just simply stop the fermentation so now let's assume yeah, bring that uh, that pot over here okay the reason why I didn't have it here is because I'm um, little clutter thank you pretty handy cameraman uh, these are for demonstration purposes this is last year's sauerkraut and this is the fresh one now this will handle four nicely it's not cramped in there and I usually set my camp stove up my old handy Coleman fill this with water put it on to a boil for 12 to 15 minutes. When it's done boiling at that prescribed time, just take it out. I have a pair of tongs and I would exercise caution in setting these things out because they're boiling hot. Set it in a something like so, another cap or a dish, and using the prescribed tools, just Tighten down the hot jar, just give her a good wrench, turn her upside down, and let it set till it cools. Periodically turn it over and let all of that good flavor go up and down, up and down to the to the sauerkraut. I would imagine you could eat it within a week or ten days, but the longer you leave it, the better it is. Now, this is only the making of sauerkraut. Comes the other good stuff. Now we got a lot of junk. What a lot of people would throw away. We've got the, the cabbage hearts. Now there to me is the best part of the cabbage. Now we'll trim those up and use caution because this could get a little hairy. Now, cameraman, if you come in, you close up, you see the difference is a nice white meat. Then you see a little woody part. And we'll take all of that off. And now this again is just a matter of choice or preference. If you want to, throw it away. It makes good compost, but it damn sure makes better pickle. I call this a, a garden variety and I grab everything in the garden that hasn't been used or can uh, and take this little peeler, peel it until you get down to a nice, and cameraman can you see that? Okay, now here again We'll get rid of that stuff. Now here's a large, <clears throat> a large cabbage heart and a fairly small one. Now you can dice them, split them in fours, whatever. Now, if I could just whistle and have that nice clean jar to come sliding down the table towards me here, which I will need in a second. There, magic. TV magic. Okay, let's we'll start uh, with a jalapeno pepper. 
And this is, use your imagination on this. Perforate it, drop it in broccoli. Several pieces of broccoli. Little tiny Brussels sprouts. A couple of little green tomatoes. And some baby carrots. And some of this junk stuff that ordinarily would got thrown away. And if you want to, you could shred it up and anything you want to with it. Because after all, this is a bonus. Now, with the same process as making sauerkraut, kosher salt, more junk cabbage, more little baby carrots, voila, even a green bean. What happened? Pick it up, keep going. The green beans are great. Snap them if you like, put them in whole if you like, doesn't matter. Uh, put several green beans in. They'll fit down in those wide mouth jars nicely. And these are durable, these vegetables, they, they're not a mushy vegetable. Even the little green tomatoes are solid and they will take pressure by pressing down on them. Okay, I almost forgot something. There's a nice fresh head of cauliflower. And it's a few chunks of that. This is a nice, crispy, crunchy type of a vegetable and tastes mighty good pickled. So we'll put some of that in. Some more shredded cabbage. Well, I'll put this over in here and wasting all of that. Press it down firmly. What do we hear? Little bitty onions. These are Egyptian onion sets that grow on the top. They go to seed. They're tasty little devils, but they're hard to peel, so I just dunk them in boiling water, and the skin comes off slightly. And we'll just put those in. More salt. More cauliflower. And more pressing. Now we'll get a little more cabbage on top. We'll go through the same thing again with some of the leaves, the stems, and whatnot to keep that airspace in the top. Put our lids on. Uh, this particular type of thing here doesn't quite create enough water, its own juice. So you might add a little, little water, just enough to bring it up to the neck of the jar. Let some air down in there. All righty. Clean off the neck real good. Lid on. And there's our garden variety of pickle. A close up shot of that, Mr. Cameraman. Okay, we'll set it aside and let it ferment, just like we do with sauerkraut, process it in the same method. And I can assure you that you haven't eaten anything as delicious. 
We've put everything in here except the cat. He don't belong in there. He don't belong in the garden even. So that's the process of making homemade sauerkraut. I'd like to thank all of you. I hope that you have picked up some information and pass on as a sort of a national heritage. Like I said before, a lot of our processes of food handling and whatnot has been lost over a period of years. This is an old fashioned method that I hang on to. I thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.